my friends. Thank you for always standing with me. To my family. Thank you for always lifting me up. I'm forever grateful for Chicago. Made me who I am. And I promise, I promise to go out there and make y'all proud. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy DC, and I'm here with a new reaction video to the Shy Season 6, Episode 8, the mid season finale. And this is my quick thoughts, my quick opinion, my quick review, my quick recap on Episode 8, and how I felt about it overall. Now, if you're a fan of the Shy like me, and you like the videos I upload and create, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button, and turn on your post bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video. Also, leave your comments and theories down below in the comment box. Now, overall, episode 8 was fire as hell. This was a great mid-season finale, but I'm also pissed the fuck off about what happened in this episode, man. I don't understand how the fuck Rob and Emmett missed. Duda was right there, bro. He was right there. They literally had him in plain sight and they missed. Like, what the hell, bro? How did y'all miss? Like, Rob, you had the kill shot right there and there on Duda. I understand your gun jammed and all that, but, bro, you should have been aiming directly at Duda. Rob aim was all over the goddamn place, bro, and he ended up getting shot by nothing. This scene right here pissed me the hell off. Like, how the hell did y'all miss? How did y'all miss the kill shot on Duda? Like, bro, this was sloppy as hell. This was sloppy as hell hell and now your boy rob is fighting for his life and his mama is mad as hell your girl alicia is pissed the fuck off she was going at tiffany heavy in this episode she was telling tiffany like so you the reason why he needed this money my son ain't never wanted to start no business and do all this extra stuff you the reason he doing all this extra stuff and alicia does got a point but at the same time tiffany was right because rob went and got shot if Alicia didn't send Rob to take out Duda. Because she paid him 100 bands like, bro, I'll give you this 100 bands, but I need you to take out the nigga that took out your uncle. And Rob tried to do that, but he ended up getting shot. And I honestly think Rob going to survive. His ass ain't dead. Rob going to survive. They said he went through surgery perfect. Ain't nothing really going on. He just ain't woke up yet. So expect your boy Rob to be in the second half of the season because Rob ain't going nowhere. He just going to be messed up, but he ain't going nowhere. And man. This scene really pissed me the hell off. Like, how did y'all fucking miss? Like, he was right there. Duda was right there, bro. And y'all still miss. Like, how? This was sloppy. This was sloppy. And I hope your boy Victor finished the job as well. Because it looked like Victor about to get back in his bag and get into that tread mode that we used to see him back in season three and four. Because now it's like, bro, Duda knows that somebody is out there trying to kill him now. And Victor told Patino, like, look. I got to handle this before any more bodies drop. And I think your boy Treg might need to handle this as soon as possible because look here. Emin and Rob can't get the goddamn job done because y'all saw what happened in this episode. They missed the kill shot and your boy Rob was right there. I'm not going for that gun jam and use, goddamn it, because Rob had a couple of bullets in his goddamn gun. And he could have really hit Duda if he really wanted to, but his aim was all over the goddamn place. And man, he got popped. He got his ass popped. And what's crazy about this whole situation is your boy Darnell just made a deal with Duda to do business with him. Because Darnell was trying to pay Duda off. He was trying to give him half of the money that Emmett owes him to get out his business deal that he got with him. But Duda didn't want the money. He told Darnell, like, I just want you to say good things about me in public. And Darnell, he wasn't really with it at first, but he ain't really got no other choice. Unless he want to get Emmett out of his business deal, he go do what Duda say. But after Emmett then took a shot at Duda now, yeah, I'm pretty sure this little deal that Darnell and Duda got is about to get fucked up. So now it's about to be a whole bunch of chaos. It's just about to be a whole bunch of chaos. And I can't wait to see what's next for this second half of this season. Now, in this episode, we saw your boy Kevin say his final goodbyes and go to L.A. so he could pursue his gaming career. And man, this episode was low key emotional as well, because it's like they showed a lot of flashbacks from when Kevin was in season one all the way to now. Like they showed us a lot of stuff in this episode. And this is really Kevin last episode in the shot because the actor Alex Huber, I believe that's his name is. He made a post on Instagram basically saying like episode eight is my last episode of the shot, you know, just saying his final goodbyes to the cast of the shot and everything like that. And man. It's been one hell of a journey for Kevin, and I cannot wait to see what's next for the actor as he branch off to do other things in life. I know he about to be playing in that new Good Burger movie, because I don't know if y'all know about that or not, but he supposed to be playing Ed's son in this next upcoming Good Burger movie, so 
I might be doing a review about that and talking about that as well when that comes out. But shout out to your boy, Kevin, man. Kevin been killing it all season long. And man, this was one hell of a way to say goodbye to Kevin. I'm not going to lie, man. This was one way to say goodbye to Kevin because now it's like he about to go off to L.A. He about to be doing his own thing. But I don't know. I don't think it's the end of Kevin character if you ask me. He might pop back up before the season is over with. I hope he pop back up before the season is over with. But moving on to Jake, your boy Kevin ended up giving Jake his old apartment before he left because he had to find somebody to take over his lease. And your boy Jake was happy. He was telling Jim, I'm like, look, Kevin about to give me his spot. I'm about to be moving out and shit. I want to turn into a bachelor pad. Gemma really thought her and Jake was about to move in together. She was over there telling Jake, I'm happy you got a house for us now. We can finally live together and all this and that. Jake was like, nah, bruh. Uh, this is about to be a bachelor pad. This is about to be the spot. I don't want you staying here. We too young to live together. And your girl Gemma got upset talking about some, I ain't giving you no more cutty. And Jake like really did not give a fuck. He like, bruh. You're not staying here with me. I want this to be a bachelor pad. And what's crazy about this whole situation right here as well, Jimmy was kicking in with your boy Bakari's sister, Brittany, in the studio, and these two end up kissing. So once again, your girl Gemma cheated on somebody in this goddamn show. She cheated on Kevin with Jake. Now she cheated on Jake with Bakari's sister. If I was Jake, I would send Gemma back to the streets because how she was acting in this episode, man. Jimmy was just moving too fast for me. I'm not going to lie. Jimmy was moving fast as hell for me, especially after Brittany gave her $10,000 to get her own spot because she like, look here, if Jake don't want to let you stay at his house, I'm going to give you some money to go get your own house. She gave Jimmy 10 bands. Like, what the hell? Like, Jimmy, you already know what time it is. This girl going to want something in return. Your girl Brittany was telling Jimmy she ain't want anything in return, but we already know what time it is. She going to want something in return. Nobody just don't give you no money for no reason. Especially ten thousand dollars. Even Jim and Dad was telling her, like, bro, where did you get this money from? This that don't make sense. Who's just gonna give you ten thousand dollars with no attachments to it or nothing like that? And I feel Marcus on this because it's like, bro, this girl just gave you ten thousand dollars. Talking about I don't want nothing in return. Bullshit. She about to come back for that sooner than later, and you better hope she don't come back for that in blood. Cause look here. $10,000 ain't nothing to be playing around with. And I want to know how the hell did Bakari's sister Brittany even get this money. I want to know who she working with. And I got a theory. She might be doing business with Alicia. With all these new characters popping up this season, like I wouldn't be surprised if they was all connected to each other. Because we saw in this episode, your girl Alicia ended up doing business with Zay. So Zay is basically about to be working with Alicia in this second half of the season. It's like, look here. I wouldn't be surprised if Alicia was forming her own team behind the scenes that we don't know about and how it's looking. I would not be surprised if that was the case right here and I was right on that theory. And if I was Gemma, I'd be safe around this girl. But how it's looking, it's looking like your girl Gemma's about to get into some shit being around Bakari's sister. If that does happen, I would not be surprised because y'all already know every time Bakari hang out with somebody, they get into some shit because of him. Like we saw what happened with Bakari and Papa. Like now that Bakari and Papa is hanging out with each other, that kind of resulted into Pastor Stanley being killed because... The people that Bakari hang out with don't like Pastor Stanley. So it's like, I would not be surprised if they had this same storyline occur with Gemma. It seemed like being around Bakari or anybody he's associated with is dangerous as hell. So it's like, I would not be surprised if Gemma get into some shit being around Bakari's sister. And I can't wait to see what happens next to this storyline right here in this next second half of the season. Now, in this episode, we saw your boy Bakari going through it. Man, he was going through it in this episode. It seemed like the only thing he did in this episode was sleep. And while he was sleeping, your boy Bakari ended up seeing the ghost of Kugi. And if y'all don't know who Kugi is, y'all need to go watch the early seasons, like season one, like the beginning of season one. Because Kugi is the reason why, like, you know what I'm saying, they had the whole storyline occur with the shot. Kugi and Jason. Those two murders is what started all these storylines that we're watching right now and what made the shy go on for this damn long. So if y'all don't know who Kugi is, you need to go do your homework and go rewatch the shy again. Because Kugi is an OG OG. But man... He popped back up and he told Bakari, like, bro, I didn't need you to take out Ronnie to avenge my death. Like, I ain't need you to do that. And he wants Bakari to live his life. He told Bakari, like, bro, I want you to live the life that I wasn't able to live. And I think this message right here is going to help Bakari do things in a positive way now. Because it's like Bakari been going through a lot of shit since season three from shooting Ronnie to now passing Stanley death and being in the streets. It's like... It's a lot on this boy, and I'm pretty sure Bakari is no older than 18 years old. So it's like, bro, I think this message right here is going to help Bakari get on his feet and do things the right way now. And I hope my boy Bakari is able to make it out this season alive, man. I don't want to see nothing happen to Bakari. I really want to see him progress. And now with Kevin going out to L.A. and basically Jake and Papa go be in Chicago, 
I feel like they go basically have Bakari hanging out more with Jake and Papa. Like I feel like that's gonna be the new trio in this next second half of the season. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just a theory of mine. I feel like they're gonna focus more on Bakari character in this second half of the season, and I can't wait to see what's next with his storyline and his character development. Now, in this episode, we saw your boy Rashad do the most dumbest shit that he didn't ever did while being on the goddamn show. Your boy Rashad accidentally texted Deja about the night he had with Tierra, thinking it was Tierra after he was at the Rock Center and he saw Tierra and Marcus all hugged up and cuddling and shit. And your boy Rashad was up in there in his feelings like, damn, Tierra dated Marcus? I ain't know that. Then he texted her. He thought he texted her telling her, like, basically, like, that one night that we had, that just the one night is best if we don't talk no more, yada, yada, yes, yada, 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 that. And the whole time, this dumbass nigga was texting Deja. He thought that he was texting Tierra in reality. He was texting Deja. And he didn't find out he was texting Deja until there was at Kevin going away party. And Tierra was there. He was asking her, like, why you ain't texting me back? She like, bro, I ain't getting no text from you. And Rashad realized, like, damn, I done sent this text to Deja. And now I'm about to get kicked the hell out the house. When I tell y'all Deja had Rashad shit packed and ready for him the moment he walked in the house, man, she had his shit all over the couch. And she wasn't even there. She sent that nigga like a little, she liked the text message that he sent and she dipped. She like, bro, I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. There go your shit. Get the hell out of my house. And look here, your boy Rashad can't blame nobody but himself because that was dumb as hell, boy. That was dumb as hell. Like, and what's crazy about this, Deja really gave Rashad the opportunity to tell her the truth, too. That's what's crazy about it, but. but he didn't, and now he most likely finna have to move back with Treg and stay at his house until he figure out his living situation because your boy Rashad is about to be on the streets. But overall, man, this mid-season finale was great as hell. Besides fucking robbing Emmett missing the kill shot on Duda, which I'm still pissed off about. That shit really got me irritated. I'm really trying to process that whole scene because I really don't understand that at all. Like, I don't know how the hell they missing Duda was right there. I'm, I'm still tripping off that shit, to be honest. But other than that, man... This episode was great as hell. I can't wait to see what's next for the second half of the season. But when they do release more information about the shy, I will be uploading videos about it and giving y'all my quick thoughts and my quick opinion about it. But until then, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button and turn on your post bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video. It's your boy DC. I'm out. I'll see you guys next time.